All right, so we'll get started. We're gonna begin in a comfortable cross-legged position. So this is where the blanket can come in handy. I want to mention that a lot of my teaching comes from the Iyengar lineage. I was studying for three years when I was in Florida with um, Pins Dubel, Trisha Amheiser, Susie Muchnik. So I just want to say their names because they were so helpful for me. And so from them, I learned when we're sitting cross-legged, it's optimal to have our knees in line with our hips. So however much height you need to get there. And then we can manually adjust our thighs. So we'll take both hands, wrap them around to the hamstring, get your fingers into the hamstring and draw your hamstring back towards your sit bones. And do that on both sides. And then leaning forward, pull the flesh of your buttocks back. And then when you come back up, see if you feel perched a little bit higher on your sit bones. You feel the connection of your sit bones to the support beneath you. Have your palms about mid thigh, the fingers wrapping around the contours of the quadricep. And the elbows are soft, slightly out to the sides. And our bicep moves up toward the front of the shoulder. There's like a little U-turn that happens. The bicep goes up and then U-turns around and the tricep moves down toward the elbow. So it's a subtle energetic awareness of what's happening in the arms. So then the half moon of the side of the chest becomes more lifted and open. Your eyes can be at a soft focus, or if it feels comfortable, you can close your eyes. Becoming aware of the breath as it flows in and out. Scanning your body as your awareness follows your breath. Noticing the quality of the breath and the quality of your energy. Acknowledging with gratitude all of the effort that was exerted to bring you to this moment in your seat. And then calling back to your center, bringing home any energy that feels like it's still in the past or hurrying ahead to the future, thanking it and saying, you can come back now. So that you feel you've fully arrived in this moment. Letting the breath facilitate that happening. Feel the skin of your face softening over the muscles. And the muscles smoothing out over the bones. Feel the sense of buoyancy the breath is creating in your chest, in your heart. More and more space being created between each rib. Perhaps noticing the breath naturally becoming longer, slower and deeper. Breathing in and out of the nose. And 
And then bring your palms to touch in Anjali Mudra, prayer hands. Connect your thumbs with the base of your sternum and use your thumbs to lift your sternum in the direction of your chin. Extend the back of your neck by just gently bowing down the chin, the bridge of the nose lowers slightly. You still feel spacious in the front of your throat. And then together we'll chant Om three times, beginning after the next inhale. Ooh. Ooh. Exhale and bow your chin towards your chest, keeping the chest lifted and the shoulders back. This act of surrendering the thinking mind down into the compassionate center of the heart. Keep your head bowed and your eyes closed. And as you exhale, just release your palms back to your thighs. Gently press the flesh of your thighs towards your knees so your arms become like a kickstand, propping up your chest and your spine even more. And on your next inhale, gently raise your head up. And in your own time, softly opening your eyes. And then we'll transition into downward facing dog. So if you've got props, you can just move them to the side. And from hands and knees, your hands then walk forward about another hand's distance in front of the shoulders. Spread your fingers, toes tucked, and then lift your knees to lift your hips. Thighs press back to pull your spine and then release your head. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Really spread your fingers here. Roll your thumb and pointer finger toward one another pressurizing your inner palm. And then from your inner palm pressing, the energy spirals up your arm to turn your biceps out and then back in. So your inner bicep is turning forward, tricep turning back. So what happens there is the collarbone spread, the upper back spreads. Now everyone bend your knees to lift your heels and that way you have more space to spread your sit bones toward the ceiling. So the weights on the balls of your feet, knees are bent, completely release your head. Keep spreading the fingers, rolling the thumb and pointer finger toward one another. And then we'll again, straighten the knees, stretching the calves toward the heels, tighten your kneecaps and pull your thighs back. Take a nice deep breath in through the nose and out through the nose. And then inhale, come forward into a plank. So just shifting the shoulders over the wrists. One long line from the crown of the head to the heels. Pull your heels back to pull your tailbone towards your heels. And that'll help float your navel away from the floor. Good. Now release to your knees and we'll bend the elbows past the ribs, lowering chest and chin to the floor. Elbows are pointing up. Ashtangasana, eight angle pose. Then we'll just slide right onto our belly. Good, have your palms under your shoulders, hover your face above the floor. Toes are untucked. Press all 10 toenails into the floor. So then your thighs engage, your kneecaps are lifted. And then magnetize your 
feet and your hands toward one another like you're trying to pull the mat to the midline and feel your navel get light away from the ground. And then press into your palms to lift your chest. Look in the same direction your heart would be pointing if it were a flashlight. So that way the back of the neck stays lengthening. Keep spreading your fingers. Pull the mat toward the center with your hands and your feet and let that slingshot the center of your chest. Forward, 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 inhale. And then like you're laying down a pearl necklace, release your spine one vertebrae at a time, exhaling. And then tuck your toes, press up to hands and knees, lift your hips, downward facing dog. Now look towards your hands and start to walk your feet forward until your feet are under your hips and let them be wider than hip width and turn your toes slightly in so you're pigeon toed. And then release the crown of your head completely and grab opposite elbows. Good. If your hamstrings feel really tight, you can bend your knees and let your torso rest towards your thighs so that your spine and your low back can be soft. But if it feels all right, straighten your legs and tighten your kneecaps and roll your thighs towards one another to spread the backs of the legs. Okay. And then bring your hands to your waist, shoulders back, press into your feet, Inhale, rise up, come all the way to stand. And exhale your arms by your sides in Tadasana, mountain pose. Have your feet under your hips. Connect to the four corners of your feet. So the outer edges of the balls of your feet, the outer edges of your heels. And just notice where is your weight? Does it feel lighter or denser at certain points in your feet? And can you make micro adjustments to feel more balanced in the distribution? And then inhale and we'll sweep our arms forward and up overhead, lift your heart toward the sky. And then exhale, swan dive, your arms come out wide Hold over your thighs. You can bend your knees if your hamstrings feel really tight. And then bring your fingertips to the tops of your shins to make a right angle at your hips, looking forward through the center of your forehead. Inhale. And then exhale, we'll all bend our knees to bring our fingertips to the floor as we step our right leg back and release the back knee down into a low lunge. Now we'll magnetize the front foot and the back leg. So like we're trying to pull the front and the back of the mat toward the midline. Feel that energizes the legs and creates a lightness through your upper body. So then it's easier to rise up, bringing the palms to the front thigh. Good. Keep magnetizing the legs. And you'll feel that helps zip up the belly, zip up the spine. And if you've got your balance, reach your arms back up into the sky, turning your triceps forward. So that action there is like taking your hand and turning the tricep forward, doing that with your muscles. So what happens is that spreads the collarbones and creates more space at the base of the neck. Inhale, lift your heart. It's like an offering up to the sun and the sun salutation. Take another inhale when you're ready. And then flow with your exhale to bring your hands back down. Ground your palms, lift your back knee, and step your front foot back into plank. Good. Now lower onto your knees. Bend your elbows right past your ribs, bring your chest to the floor, 
and then slither onto your belly. Untuck your toes. Baby Cobra, magnetize your hands and feet toward the midline to slingshot your heart forward, pressing into the palms to float the chest up, inhaling. Exhale with control, lower the spine, vertebrae by vertebrae. Good, tuck your toes, inhale, press up through hands and knees. Lift your knees to lift your hips, downward dog. So for this one, you can pedal your feet out, one heel at a time. Bending the opposite knee. So then it's giving you some more space to really stretch the other heel toward the floor. Good. You got it. And then look to your hands and stay on your tippy toes as you walk your feet forward to the front of the mat. So lots of weight is in the hands, almost like you could just like kick up into a handstand there. But stay on your feet <laughs> and fold again if you need to bend your knees so that you can feel support in your low back go for it otherwise tighten your kneecaps to engage your quads that'll help open the hamstring and then fingertips to the tops of the shins right angle at the hips inhale look forward with the center of your forehead exhale lengthen and fold and then reverse your swan dive, sweeping the arms up and overhead, palms touch, look up. And exhale, arms by your sides, Tadasana. Feel the stacking of your knees over your heels, your hips over your knees, your ribs over your hips, your shoulders over your ribs your ears over your shoulders. And just feel the balance. And then we'll inhale, sweep the arms up, look up, palms touch. Exhale, swan dive, fold over your thighs. Inhale, halfway lift, fingertips to shins, send your heart forward. And exhale, we'll all bend our knees to ground our fingertips. So now the left leg can step back. Low lunge, so bring the back knee to the floor. Magnetize the front foot and the back leg. Like you're trying to pull the front and back of mat to center. Energizing the legs. And work with that energized and uh, leg muscle energy to bring yourself up. Lift your chest toward the sky in this exalted lunge. So with the back knee down, it's okay to sink your hips and let that front knee go slightly over your ankle. Just keep the front heel fully grounded and keep magnetizing the legs toward the center to zip your belly button up. Feel the shoulder blades like a shelf lifting your heart toward the sky. And this pose, this asana is an offering of your energy to the sun, to the day, to life. Breathe into that, inhale, exhale. One more, inhale. And flow with your exhale to bring your hands down. Ground your palms. Lift your back knee and step your front foot back. Plank. And then flow, exhale, lower, knees, chest and chin. Shoulders back and slither onto your belly, untuck your toes. Magnetize your hands towards your feet. Magnetize pubic bone toward the sternum. So those two actions facilitate one another and it creates a lightness in the belly and lengthens the low back as you press into the palms to lift up baby cobra. Keeping the back of the neck long, so stretching the base of the skull away from the base of the neck, gazing in the direction the heart is shining, inhale. And laying down the pearl necklace of your spine, one pearl at a time, exhaling. 
and then tuck your toes, press up through hands and knees, lift your hips, downward dog. Good. Inhale, look between your hands and exhale, step your feet forward, staying high on your tippy toes, lots of weight in the hands and then ground your heels once they're under your hips. Inhale, fingertips to the tops of the shins. Exhale and fold. Inhale, sweep your arms out and up overhead. And exhale, Tadasana, mountain pose. I'm gonna tilt my camera up. Feel the grounded space between the floor, your feet. Now pressurize the ball mound of your big toe and feel how that energizes your arches and encourages the arches of your feet to lift up. And then roll your thighs in. It's just a gentle energetic rolling in. Kneecaps lift, thighs roll in. So we're not just letting them turn out. Boop. And that creates a lifting of the whole leg to lift the spine. So now keep that, but step your big toes together. Heels are slightly apart. We're gonna to come to Utkatasana, fierce pose or chair. Inhale, sweep your arms up, shoulder width apart, turning the triceps forward. And then first, just bend your knees and drop your hips straight down. So we're not bringing the butt back. We're just bending the knees, hips go straight down. And just notice that how lifted your chest can feel here, keeping the arms moving back, biceps next to the ears, tailbone reaching toward the earth. Gently magnetize the pubic bone toward the sternum to help contain the inner organs. As you feel this heat you're generating through your breath, through your movement, warming the body from the inside out. All the while feel softness through your eyes, through your mouth. From the center of your face, it's like all the skin and muscles just softens from center to sides. Keep that sense of softness as you inhale and straighten the legs. Keep your arms up for a challenge. Now we'll go lower, exhale and drop your hips back, but keep the chest lifted by keep, keeping the biceps moving back toward the ears. And bring more weight into your heels by moving your shin bones back, but keep the toes on the ground. That negotiation of shifting the weight toward the heels, but still feeling the weight in the metatarsals of the toes flowing forward like a river. And then we'll now allow the chest to come down. So really reaching the sit bones back, bowing the heart down, keep going and then bring your fingertips to the floor and then step one leg back and then the other come to a plank and you can lower on your knees or stay in a plank position as you bend your elbows right next to your ribs, chaturanga, all the way down. Pause here and rest your forehead on the floor, just making sure you're not squishing your nose. Keeping your palms under your shoulders. Slide the tips of your shoulder blades down your back towards one another. Good. Now bend your knees, bend both knees and flex your heels and then bring your arms by your sides, hovering off the floor with your palms face up and then start to reach your fingertips toward the outsides of your knees to lift your chest. Keep rolling the fronts of the shoulders open how much spreading can you create through the collarbones? Using the strength of your arms, the reach of your fingers, 
to keep lifting the chest. Feet are actively flexed, thighs grounded. Inhale. And then exhale, lower down, release your legs, release your arms, bring your forehead straight down to the floor. Enough space so that your nose is still free to breathe. And take an inhale through the nose and then let's exhale together out of the mouth with a little sigh. <sighs> Do that again, in through the nose. And a little sigh. And again, allow some sound to release. And just feeling any energy that no longer serves you is allowed to just drop into the earth to be recycled. And now bend your knees again. And this time we'll start to stretch the fingertips back and then see if you can grab your ankles from the outside. Sometimes that's a bit of a reach. And if you can't grab your ankles, that's fine. And then just keep stretching your arms back towards the outside of your knees. So we're coming into a bow prep. So we're keeping the thighs on the ground for this one. Right away, magnetize your pubic bone towards your sternum so you feel your lower back getting longer. Now we'll start to kick the toes back so the shins move back. And then that kicking brings the arms along for the ride. And then our chest lifts. We can roll our shoulders open. Keep extending the base of the skull away from the base of the neck. And can you find softness through the face? So encouraging a sense of effortlessness because we've got a steady breath, a steady gaze. Let your gaze be forward, straight ahead. So then even though we feel this intensity in the body, there's a sense of calm in the mind through the breath, through the gaze. Work with your next inhale to really puff up your chest and then move with your next exhale to begin to release step by step, arriving with your forehead on the floor, and the arms relaxed by your sides. Feel the breath and the heartbeat coming back to equilibrium. Breathing in and breathing out. If the breath invites you to exhale out of the mouth, go for it. Perhaps a little sigh again. <sighs> Sound really helps energy to move. And you're all muted, so you can make as much noise as you want and only you will know. <sighs> Complete your next cycle of inhale and exhale. And then we'll come back with bent knees. Now we'll move toward full bow. So for full bow, we'll come toward the ankles again, reaching the fingertips back. This time, point your toes as you grab your ankles. So Dhanurasana, bow pose. Now the feet not only kick back, but also up. So the toes lift toward the ceiling. So the fronts of the thighs move away from the floor and the feet kick back to open the chest, lengthening the arms, rolling the shoulders open and then kick your toes up so much that your weight shifts off of the thighs and the pelvis and more into the center of your navel, lifting and kicking. Move with your breath. So find expansion as you inhale and softening into that spaciousness as you exhale. You can even put a little smile on your face to feel a sense of ease in the mind. Two more full breaths. 
Another full inhale. And then work with your exhale to lower back down, release limb by limb, forehead to the floor, everything fully relaxed, but allow your shoulders to move away from the floor by sliding the tips of your shoulder blades down your back. So your chest stays open. Connect with the undulation of your body, moving against the floor with the flow of your breath. Feel that water quality, the ocean of your breath in your being. The pulse of your life force in your heartbeat. This interplay of fire, water, earth, and air. And now bring your palms under your shoulders. Keep your elbows by your sides. Magnetize your pubic bone towards your sternum so you feel your inner organs are contained as you press up through hands and knees and then we'll come to child's pose or downward facing hero pose. So your big toes touch, the knees are about hip width apart and your arms are fully outstretched as you release your forehead toward the floor. And if you feel tightness in your knees or ankles, this is a great place to incorporate a rolled blanket for support. If your forehead doesn't comfortably touch the floor, you can stack your fists and rest your forehead on that tower. Now have your fingers spreading here, even though this is uh, a cooling posture, it's still infused with vigor through the stretching of the arms, the spreading of the fingers. This is an opportunity to practice how the arms should feel in downward facing dog. So the upper arm externally rotates while the lower arm spirals toward the inner palm. So essentially there's a wringing action going on, like if you're wringing out a, a wet towel. So the lower arm spirals toward the point between the pointer finger and the thumb. So the thumb and pointer finger roll toward one another to press the inner palm. And then there's a spiraling up the arm, turning the upper arm from inside out. And even if it just feels like such a subtle difference, see if you can notice what happens in your collarbones and your upper back when you engage the arms in this way, creating more space around the base of the neck. Good. Feel the center of your chest heavy like a bowling ball toward the floor. Surrendering your heart. Good, and then finish your next full breath all the way in. And then all of the air flows out, lingering at the bottom of the exhale. And then gently walk your hands back under your shoulders, walk your hands up to your thighs. Good. And then we'll come to stand on our knees and tuck our toes for a little back bend called Ustrasana camel pose. So here we'll incorporate again that magnetizing of the pubic bone toward the sternum. So what happens when I'm not doing that my butt kind of sticks out and my belly drops. And then when I do do that, whoop, it just contains that energy and moves it up. So our palms will come to the top of the buttocks. You can point your fingers up or down and just encourage that directionality. Top of the buttocks moving down, tailbone pointing to the back of the knees. Now imagine there's a wall right in front of you and your aim is to keep your thighs pancaked against that imaginary wall. 
And then with the pubic bone magnetized toward the sternum, draw your breath up into your upper chest. And as you exhale, imagining you're like cinching your waist to contain that, that puff of the chest, like you're keeping the air up and begin to shine your heart toward the sky. Looking toward the ceiling, shoulder blades down the back. And if it's available to you, reach one hand back and then the other thumbs on the outside as you grip your heels. Keep pancaking your thighs against the imaginary wall. Very important. So then you're creating like a slingshot action. Good. When you hold your ankles, you can roll your shoulders open. If you don't have your ankles, just keep working the shoulders open energetically. And then even more important is to keep bringing the pubic bone up, thighs forward. Holding for several breaths, keeping that soft smile on the face. Beautiful heart opener. Nice open lungs, fill the lungs with your fresh breath in and out. One more, all the way in and all the way out. And as always, coming out the same way we came in, retrace your steps, stack your spine, move like you're moving through honey. Every movement deliberate. And then untuck your toes and come to sit on your heels in hero pose. So have your arms straight and your palms on your thighs. So let's do some breath work here. If it's uncomfortable to just sit like this, feel free to sit on a pillow or a brick or a blanket. You can put the, the brick, the blanket, anything that you have nearby between your feet and sit on it like that. Good. So we're gonna do Kapalabhati, the skull shining breath to help clear out the nasal passages. Uh, so it sometimes requires a tissue if you're a little stuffy. So if you're sitting, sitting in Virasana, gently hug your outer ankles in. That just helps to zip everything up. Arms are straight. So for this breath, there's a pumping action of the belly on the exhale. And we're focusing on the exhale out of the nose and the inhale happens naturally. So we don't have to force a inhale, like not like that. So let me just, I'll demo a couple rounds. This is what it looks and sounds like. So there's like a little twitch happening in my nose that helps to stimulate a nerve connected to the brain. So good. And then as I exhale, my navel's drawing toward my spine. And then I'm just relaxing for that instant when the bre inhale breath comes in. So the inhale is very subtle and it just happens. So we'll do a few rounds of this and we'll start off with just a few at first. So we always signal to ourselves that we're ready to begin with a normal inhale and then a nice long exhale. And then normal breath in and then begin. Eight more. Four, three, two, all the air out. And then normal breath in, normal breath out. Breathe in and out of the nose. Look forward and slightly up with a soft gaze. Just let your breath happen naturally before we begin the next round. Feel as if there's a golden thread tied to the crown of your head and it's lifting your spine toward the sky. It's like your spine is just dangling here from the golden thread. Shoulder blades sliding down the back. 
and then take a normal breath in and a nice long exhale out of the nose. And then normal breath in and then we'll begin. A little longer this time, keep going. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. All the air out, normal breathing. Look forward and slightly up. Soft gaze, the lion's gaze. As if you were a lion in the savanna, looking a thousand miles toward the rising sun. Feel as if the breath is breathing you. Feel how the breath creates a sense of lightness and lifting through your spine. And we'll do one more round like that. It's optional to have your hand on your belly. It's nice to, to feel what's happening there, but you don't have to. If you have both hands on your thighs, the arms are like your kickstands keeping your spine lifted. So take a normal breath in and a nice long exhale out of the nose. Normal breath in and then begin. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. All the air out. Now this time, close your eyes, turn your palms up in your lap, elbows by your sides. Turn your eyeballs to your third eye. So the space between the center of your forehead. Gently engage the muscles of your pelvic floor. So the same muscles used to stop the flow of urine. This is called mula bandha, the root lock. So any energy that we're generating through our practice, through our breath work is now contained in the body and directed up the spine with our gaze, looking toward the third eye, the prefrontal cortex the higher evolved part of our brain. Inwardly, recite the sound of OM. 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 And feel as if the breath is breathing you. Effortless breathing. Om. 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 And see, imagine, feel a golden light rising up your spine as you inhale, it fills the full length of your spine interweaving through all the nerve bundles, the chakras illuminating all of your energy centers and clearing away the pathways with this golden healing light. And on your next exhale, softly open your eyes, sense that this golden light is shining out from your eyeballs, lion's gaze, so looking a thousand miles toward the horizon. Let the center of your awareness recede toward the back of your body as your gaze extends out beyond the beyond. Good. We'll keep this inward connection. And just gently walk your hands forward back to hands and knees. 
Walk your hands a little bit in front of the shoulders, about a hand's distance. Spread your fingers, turn the upper arm from inside out. The same thing I've been mentioning the whole class. Spread your fingers, roll the thumb and pointer finger toward each other. And then lift your knees to lift your hips, press your thighs back. So your sit bones are lifting and spreading toward the sky and the hips are moved back by the strength of your legs. And your shins are moving back and your arms energetically are moving in the opposite direction. So it's like your forearms are moving in the uh, head direction. Your shins are moving back in the feet direction. And that helps create a little more traction to lengthen your spine. Let gravity move the center of your chest closer toward your chin and completely release the back of your skull toward the crown of your head. And then look between your hands and walk your feet towards your hands until you can ground your heels under your hips. And then bring your hands to your waist, fingers pointing toward the floor, shoulders back. Good. And then lift with your upper back as you press into your feet to rise up. Release your arms, Tadasana. And then engage your thighs a few times. Um, tense and release your thigh muscles. So we're getting the blood from the legs to move up to the brain. If you ever feel dizzy or like if you get up too fast and you black out, that's, that's a good thing to do is just tense and release the thighs. So especially after sitting and doing breath work and then coming to stand, that can help. Good. And bring your hands to your waist. Uh, if you have tight hamstrings and you have yoga bricks, I'll just demonstrate what you can do for this next one. We're going to do a wide-legged uh, stretch. So if you want to use bricks, have them in front. And then everyone will step our feet a nice wide distance. Turning the toes slightly inward so the outer edges of your feet are parallel to the edges of your mat. And the outer edges of the feet are like uh, knives slicing down into the floor. So there's this sense of cutting down the outer edges of the feet. Press into the ball mound of your big toe. So the arches lift. And then the inner ankle all the way up the inner thigh has that sense of lifting from those actions in the feet. Kneecaps are engaged. The thighs energetically are rolling inward even if it just feels like a micro movement and that spreads the back of the leg. Magnetize pubic bone to sternum so that the organs are contained and then the spine can lift. We've got the hands at the hips, shoulders back. Inhale and puff your heart up toward the ceiling. And then exhale, lead with the center of your chest as you come down. Now, if you've got your bricks, you can place your palms on your bricks right under your shoulders. And if you don't have bricks, you bring your fingertips to the floor under your shoulders. Good. And if your hamstrings feel really tight, you can bend your knees because you'd um, if if you're here, you don't want that. So then you can bend the knees if the hamstrings are tight and get the length in the low back. Good. So we're sending the center of the chest forward to start. And then as you exhale, walk your hands back. If you've got your bricks, you can walk your bricks back. I'll show you from the side until your fingertips are in line with your toes and the elbows point behind you as you release the crown of your head towards the floor. Maybe it touches, maybe it doesn't. Tilting your weight toward the balls of the feet. And again, you can bend your knees here to release your spine. And um, if you feel really tight here, a great thing to do also is to have a chair right here, or if you have like some other kind of like table or low surface, you can rest yourself on a prop like that. Um, 
I, I do really miss being in studios that are just filled with props and being over to come over to a student and just say, here, do this. <laughs> but I'm just really glad that we can all do this together. Good. Now the aim here is to get some reverse blood flow from the heart into the head. So again, if your hamstrings feel tight, go ahead and just bend your knees and release your head that way. Good, and just take some deep breaths. Wherever you are, shoulder blades draw down the back. And the arms here uh, are kind of like chaturanga arms. When like you've got your palms where you've got them, Jada, you can bend your elbows straight back in the direction of your gaze. Good. Yeah, and mom, you've got your feet, so you can use your arm strength to draw the crown of your head toward the floor, shoulders down the back. Good, just a couple more breaths. And Josh, really draw your shoulder blades down your back, like right back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One more full breath, all the way in, all the way out. And then we'll walk our hands out so they're under our shoulders. And from here, just heel toe your feet a little bit closer together. We're still in a wide stance, but they're just a little closer. So then it's a little bit easier to bring our hands up to our hips and inhale, rise up to stand. Step your feet together, Tadasana. Good. And then just take a few little um, like bouncy bends in the knees as you roll your shoulders back. So we've done a lot of um, like instruction on alignment. It can feel a little rigid sometimes. Just remembering like uh, we don't have to be like that all the time. So stepping your feet apart, we'll take a few Twist from side to side, just letting the arms flow, keeping the shoulders rolling open, shifting our weight from side to side. You can breathe in and out of the nose. You can breathe in through the nose and out from the mouth. <sighs> and connecting to a sense of like a candle flame being in our center. And as you do that now, start to let your arms go wider. You can have your feet as far or as close together as feels comfortable, shifting side to side. And then bringing the hands toward heart center and the elbows wide. And just notice the rotation feels a little tighter, not in like a tense way, but in like a more compact way. And then even more compact still, elbows in, and you can go a little faster when we have the limbs in closer. And it's like you're generating this inner, inner flame is being kindled through this movement, this Kriya. It's the term for these action. Kriya means action, but also refers to these repetitive movements in certain yoga lineages. Mm. And then bring your arms up. I'm gonna tilt my camera up a little bit. I have my fingers interlaced and pointer fingers released. So it's like the tip of your candle flame. I'll show you. So you can sense there's like this spiraling kindling energy. This is a great thing to do really early in the morning to wake up. Good. And then bringing back through center coming out, or, or reversing rather, the way we began. And then the elbows wide, and then the arms wide, and then softer. Good. And gradually step your feet a little closer together, 
Close your eyes now in Tadasana and feel the subtleties of the, the balancing that goes on in your body just in standing. Tune in to the four corners of your feet, the outer edges of the balls of the feet, the outer edges of the heels. And can you make subtle adjustments to feel more symmetrical, side to side, forward and back? Good. And then inhale, sweep the arms up like you're gathering all this golden sunlight from around you. And then we're gonna rain the hands down. I'm, I'm just coming down onto my knees so you can see my arms, but stay standing. Exhaling, inhaling, sweeping the arms up and then raining that golden light down, washing through you, clearing your energy. Again, inhaling, sweeping the arms up and exhaling, bringing it down and through. Anything that doesn't serve you, let it wash into the earth to be recycled and renewed once more. Inhale, bringing in all the energy that you need for your day. Good, relaxing, Tadasana. So we're going to make our way onto our back. And so to get there, we're going to first reach the arms up into the air, lift your heels, come onto the balls of your feet. So it's a balance. Have your big toes touching and your ankles squeezing in. So maybe you can tell I'm on my toes, lifting, lifting, lifting. Then bring your arms forward, shoulder height. Keep your heels lifted. Lift your knees as you lower your hips. Keep lifting your knees, lifting your heels lifting your knees, lifting your heels to come all the way to sit on your heels. Good, it's a balance. And if you just come down to your butt already, that's fine. But if you can with control, then reach forward to lower your heels down and come down onto your sit bones and hug your knees in. It's not always so graceful a transition, but it's a good practice and really good strengthening for the feet. So here I'm on my sit bones and I'm hugging up on my shins to help draw my low back in and up. So just notice if meh, that starts to happen, use that arm strength to help lengthen the spine. Um, and let's do Navasana boat pose. So here, I'm gonna start to lean back. And as I lean back, I'm gonna walk my hands back behind my thighs. And actually from the beginning, if it's hard to hold your shins, you can always hold behind your thighs. And then as I lean back, my arms start to straighten. I feel my sit bones are connected and my low back is moving in and up. And if I can maintain that, then I bring my shins parallel to the floor. My knees are about hip width apart. You can also have them together. And then begin to straighten your legs. If this feels tight on your hamstrings, you can just stay here. But once the legs are extended, tightening the kneecaps. And then whether your knees are straight or bent, release your arms, keeping them parallel to the floor, plugging your upper arm into your shoulder socket so your shoulder blades prop up your chest. Good. Navasana, boat pose. Look at your big toes. That's the drishti, the gaze, the focal point. Little smile on the face. So that creates a sense of ease through the effort. Good. And then we'll come out together, move with the exhale to come back to center. Soft gaze. And then create like a scoop with your arms and a scoop with your belly. And we'll lower down one vertebrae at a time, coming all the way to our backs. Good. Keep your knees bent. And in fact, bend your knees even more to bring your heels under your hips. Good. Hold the sides of your mat 
and shift from one shoulder blade to the other to tuck your triceps underneath of you to spread your upper chest. Good. And then we'll come into bridge. So it's like a, a shoulder stand variation. Press into your feet and begin to lift your hips, stretching the fronts of your thighs towards your knees to lift your hips even more. Pressing into the backs of the arms. You can even tuck your shoulder blades underneath of you one at a time, even more once you're up. Just be careful not to turn your head in bridge pose. Anytime you've got your weight on your shoulders and your head, and um, it's important to just keep gazing straight. No need to strain the neck. Press down into your heels and feel like your heels are trying to drag the mat toward you. Feeling a zap of energy in the hamstrings. And then move your shin bones toward the head side of your mat, so toward you, to get even more lift in your hips. And feel all this warmth, this fire in the legs. Let the floor massage your shoulder blades with the, the press of the earth and gravity moving the shoulders down your back. Use your breath to puff your chest up towards your chin and look toward the center of your chest with your eyeballs. You should feel intensity, but with the eyes focused and centered and with the mouth soft, a sense of ease spreading through your body because the mind is calm. Two more breaths. One more breath. And then lay down the pearl necklace of your spine, vertebrae by vertebrae, pearl by pearl. And then let yourself completely let go, relax right here. Your back body spreading into the earth. Couple breaths, knowing you're exactly where you need to be, doing exactly what you need to do in this moment. Now bend your elbows out like a cactus on the ground and step your feet a few inches wider, not as wide as the narrow width of the mat. And then we're gonna tick tock the knees side to side, moving the the shins like windshield wipers. So we're getting a gentle twist through the midsection, plus the floor massages our glutes here and the hips. We feel really nice. Moving as fast or as slow as feels good. Maybe it feels good to just hold in one of the, the directions and just take a few breaths there. Maybe a little bit of wiggling to let the floor massage out an area of extra density. You can ride the wave of each breath, letting the breath dictate when you come back to center and when you twist. Lots of options. Little soft smile on the face. And Finish your next round of side to side or wherever you are. Let's begin to meet back in center, but take your time. And then when you're ready, bring both knees in toward the chest, wrapping your arms around your shins or backs of the thighs, wherever you can keep the shoulder blades on the ground. And then we'll go into a, a deeper twist. So now the arms will come all the way out like a T. And then we'll drop both knees over to the right. You can look toward the ceiling to begin. 
and use your right hand outside your stacked knees to keep them stacked. And then you can turn your head to the left. You can experiment. You can keep looking up or you could look to the side. If this feels really constricting and like, eh, it's just not, I can't relax into it. You can press into the back of your head and your arms and shift your shoulders a couple inches also to the right. And that can sometimes help to just straighten the spine out a little bit more and give us a little more freedom to breathe. Notice where your breath travels when it's slightly constricted by the twist, sending the breath into the kidneys and the low back. One more full breath in and all the air out. And bring your right arm back out, pressing into the floor. Bottom thigh lifts the top thigh up back to center. Adjust if you need so that you feel aligned and centered. And then we'll take both knees, keeping them squeezed together as you lower over to the left. Press into the back of your head and shoulders and shift your shoulders a little bit to the left. Left hand outside the knees to keep them stacked. And then turning the chest toward the ceiling. The front left ribs chase the right ribs around. And you can gaze, drizzle your gaze over to the right. And the breath can help us explore our edge in a posture. Our inhales creating lift and expansion and extension. And when we exhale, we can soften and explore moving perhaps slightly deeper in whichever direction we're exploring in a posture, an asana, the pose. In asana, that word refers to like a foundation, a seat. So in every pose, we're exploring our foundation. We're exploring our sense of support. And that can mean from the earth, it can mean in the spine, it can mean in the mind. It's really beautiful to explore the Sanskrit and the philosophy behind what seems like, oh, I'm just moving my body, just exercise, but it's so much more. Take a nice deep breath in and then all the air out. And then replace your left arm on the floor, bottom thigh lifts the top thigh up back to center and hug your knees in. Gently adjust yourself to feel more straight and centered. And then extend your legs up into the air for a moment, arms by your sides, just let the blood flow out of the legs. Good. All this fresh oxygenated blood out of the legs into the digestive organs. Flushing out the, the liver, gallbladder. And then you can either bend your knees to plant your feet or lower your legs down nice and slow, do a little core action. And then one at a time, bend your knees and then let your knees drop to the side and press your feet together, press your heels together and make a little triangle with your pointer fingers touching and your thumbs touching. Rest your, your thumbs at your belly button and the triangle points down toward the pubis. Have your shoulder blades tucked down your back. Just feel the warmth of your hands. Even if you can't feel them directly on your skin, just the energy of your hands 
bringing this nurturing sense to our creative center. The second chakra lives here. So you can even envision a glowing orange, golden light beneath your palms. The element of water lives here. This abundant fluid quality, a sense of flow of endless creativity existing in this space within you. And I feel like I could spend forever here, but it's time to move into Shavasana. So this, the best way to come in from here would be using your hands outside your thighs to help your legs together. So there's no strain in the hip flexors. And then very nice and slow, moving one leg out and then the other. If you've got a blanket nearby, it's really great to at least cover your feet. If you can cover your whole body with a blanket, that weight on you can feel really nice. So if you need to uh, get anything to feel more comfortable, go for it. You can also put a pillow under your head. I like to just lay flat on the ground. Make little adjustments, uh, such as shoulder blades tucking down your back, rolling the bicep out, turning the palms face up. Extending out through your heels. And breath by breath, moment by moment, allowing yourself to surrender more fully into the earth beneath you. Releasing all control of the breath now. Relax your tongue from the tip to the root. And the lips barely touch. The softness of the eyelids bathe the eyeballs. It's silky smooth sensation. And the eyes relax from the inner corners to the outer. And feel all the muscles and skin of the face smoothing over the bones. Feel the gentle press of gravity assisting your body into a more full surrender, the earthiness of your bones, the puddly quality of all the fluids in the body feel as if you're spreading out like a puddle on the ground. And there's just this gentle undulation of the breath in the body like the surface of a very calm ocean. Realizing how much of our being is made of water and having compassion for ourselves, we can see how versatile the ocean can be depending on the weather and the moon. And so when we can realize that this same wild nature exists within us, we can just observe it when it's happening, just as we observe the ocean when we're standing ashore. So too, we can observe the fluctuations in our mind and our body from this place of being a, a peaceful, objective witness of it all. The 
in these last few moments in Shavasana. We're connected with that deepest essence of our being, of this peaceful, eternal witness, knowing all is well. another few breaths in silence. And feel as if you're opening the windows of all of your pores to let the breath flow in a little longer, slower and deeper. And the breath flows out through all the windows of your pores, long, slow and deep. Again, so welcoming the breath in, letting all of the air flow out. And welcome in some gentle movement by wiggling the fingers and toes, bringing some warmth to the extremities. And you can touch each finger one at a time with the respective thumbs. You can do that a few times. And very gently circle your wrists and your ankles. Turn your head from ear to ear. And then very mindfully, as you rest your palms on your chest, begin to bend one knee at a time to plant your feet. We're going to roll to our right side. It's helpful to scoot the hips a little bit to the left and then roll to the right using your bottom arm as a pillow and just draping your top arm over your side. Taking this moment in fetal pose. This moment of rebirth after Shavasana, the corpse pose, which is an opportunity to, to shed but no longer serves, like a little death at the end of every practice, the death of the parts that we're ready to release. Now, as we come back through fetal pose, we're born anew. And we have the opportunity to do this with every practice, but also moment to moment. Now, keeping your attention directed inward as if your eyeballs were looking down into your heart. Begin to press yourself up to sit, pressing in your palm, pass it through the head and create a comfortable seat for yourself, whatever that looks like. Ending practice where we began in Sukhasana, the pose of sweetness. You can hold on to your knees and plug your upper arm into your shoulder to lift your chest. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then keeping the spine tall, palms in Anjali Mudra. We'll close with the sound of Om together, beginning after the next inhale. Ooh. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu. May all beings be happy. May all beings be free.
And gently bow your head to seal your practice, acknowledging all teachers past, present, and future, and acknowledging the greatest guru of all, that which lives within you, the capital S self. And that higher self within me recognizes and greets that light within you, which means namaste. Mm.